So let's do a clipping path under the object. We'll come down to clipping path. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to detect edges and say OK. So now I have that image here. And it should be the same as the clipping path. That's what we have now. If you notice, now it wraps around that particular object that's there. Now I only have one object, one um, uh, size to choose from for the offset because it needs to do it around the entire object. So you can see the blue lines that are there. That's the amount of offset that we're using here. So I clip like that. And when I let go, I can see that it wraps around that object nicely. If I change the size of that object, it will also change the wrap as well. And again, sometimes getting it just right is difficult. You notice here, rabbit, it actually jumps it across here. So that's kind of weird. It hyphenates it. It's because that path is sticking into it. Now I can cheat a little bit if I want. That is an editable path. So I can automatically grab that path that's there. And instead of doing the path, the clipping path, which would show or hide the image, I'm going to come out here to the blue one. And I can pull this down. It gets a little messy sometimes. But I can do it enough so that at least those words go back together. So I'm just kind of messing with this path a little bit. So you notice that wrapped around there a little nicer. I'd say that the text wrap is about 80% perfect. It's one of those things. And it, it's not so much that it's imperfect. It's that you're trying to work with letting that you have. Sometimes you might notice that it looks really off here because something either sticks into it or because there's the letting, if it tells it to move a little bit, but then you've also got another line of letting, sometimes the, you know, the gap will be larger on the right side than the left side, especially when you're working with multi-columns like this. I'm going to go back to page one here and look at a couple of the other options that are here. We have jump. So it actually jumps it so that it looks like you've created two single text frame columns. Now keep in mind, it jumps from here to here. Now, if you wanted it to go across and across, we'd need to have two separate text frames for that. So right now, my text is going, what is the use of a book down here? So you have to remember that's actually what's happening. I can also jump it so it goes to the next column or the next page. All right, so I can choose that. I can also, instead of that, I can invert it, and the text only appears in the frame. Now, why would you want that? I don't know. There's probably people that would say, oh, I have the perfect use for that. I have never used that, but you can do that if you want to. You notice it also says both wrap both the right and the left side. You can just wrap text on one side or the other as well. So again, you've got a lot of different options toward and away from the spine, if you're using the spine, and also the largest area. And I don't know how that figures that at all. I don't think I've ever used largest area. I've used the right and left side. Generally, I jump it on both. If I don't want it to be next to the text, I just use the jump for that. We can see where you can actually have that. Uh, wrap your text around, get you some interesting layouts as well. The other thing is you can also hide. You can put this on a hidden layer. And even though it's on a hidden layer, it still works with the wrap. So I could put this on a layer that you can't see the flower, but it still wraps around the flower. So I've still got this nice flower shape in the middle. right? But like I said, sometimes the, the uh, wrap doesn't look all that great, although this one doesn't look too bad. But it might look a little bit on the top. If I want to move this down, I could either change the offset, or sometimes you move it down to fit one line, and then the other line looks really crammed. There's actually a great script out there. I think it's called Wrap Nudger. And I love it, because you put it in there, and then you can leave the shape there, and you can move the item within it so that the wrap looks good, and then move the image where you need it. The other way around that, if you don't want to use a script, is you could have one frame that's used to offset your text. You've got just a, a frame that is doing the text wrap, and then you've got the image in a different text frame on top of it that doesn't have text wrap. But then you're trying to maintain two separate frames. It's all right if you know you're going to put it there and leave it. But if you're going to make any changes, sometimes that's really, really difficult.